Greetings and welcome to the Superb Diamond Range Show. This is your host Superb, broadcasting from Edinburgh. Today's date is the 12th of March 2015 and in this episode I'm going to be discussing homelessness. Now homelessness um, is a major thing all around the world in the you know, it's unbelievable in this day and age how many people are without homes and, you know, how many people are living on the streets. And for me, this is one of the biggest uh, problems that we have in the world right now. Um, I remember being in um, Philadelphia and New York and when I first visited the United States and going to bus stations where you had homeless people um, going into the bus station, uh, sort of taking a seat in the sitting area uh, just to try and catch some sleep. So they would sort of be sitting in the chair um, and then sort of falling asleep, sitting down or or even standing up, depending on the situation. And every now and again, you'd get like a um, security guard or a police officer would kind of, you know, recognize them or, you know, catch them in the middle of a, of a snooze and, and, you know, boot them out of there, basically kick them out. And, you know, they used to just use that place as a kind of place to where it was warm and you could, you know, this was like a really cold winter in America. So that was like their, you know, refuge, I guess, whenever they were, you know, in between homes. And, you know, quite a lot in London, I remember seeing a lot of people uh, living out of the cardboard boxes on the streets. And, you know, every now and again, I would, if I if I had some spare change, I would always offer it to them. Um, but I was always advised to you know, maybe give them something like a, a soup or a sandwich or something, um, you know, rather than money, because a lot of people used to say that, oh, if you give them money, they'll probably just spend it on alcohol kind of thing. Um, but I guess alcohol has its advantage, you know, especially like things like whiskey and things like that in that, you know, it might keep them a bit warm, I guess, when the winter comes, um, make them feel good, I guess, as well, because the situation's so bad. Um, Ultimately, I just can't believe that there's so many homeless people and and the worst um, is, you know, when you get families that are made homeless, you know, with really young children and it's just really, really terrible. And for me, one of the things I've learned about it is, you know, I sort of feel that in this day and age, we should all be have the right to a home. Um, now, I'm not suggesting like we all have massive mansions, you know, or anything like that, but just a home adequate to our needs and, you know, with enough rooms to kind of fit our families in and I feel that you know all of us should have that right and um, things like food as well should be you know taken care of as well really to be honest um, and energy um, ultimately you know if you want to go and do a day's work then the extra work you do should be going towards buying the things that you like be it computers electronics fashion or whatever but you should have the basics you know should all be provided uh, which I think would be a much better system to operate in. Um, the way they've kind of made it is is that we need to pay for everything now. And if we're not working, then we can't pay our bills. So we end up homeless. And, you know, not everybody has sort of family to fall back on uh, or friends and, you know, uh, people that will look after them. And, you know, in some families, um, you know, they might have had a fight, a row, and they'll get, you know, kicked out of the house and they'll have nowhere to go. You know, they'll try friends, they'll try families. They might be able to stay with a friend for a little while, but after a while they become, as the saying goes, like a bad smell. So they, they you know, get asked to leave and, and then they end up nowhere. And, you know, some of them, I'm sure, I mean, people will say we're living in a like a welfare system that, you know, you can always go there and ask for help and, you know, and I'm sure a lot of them have tried this and, you know, maybe it's not so easy. It's, you know, a lot of paperwork involved and, you know, they might not be so helpful at the job center. And um, I think there are people obviously that choose it as a kind of lifestyle. You know, they actually um, don't really want to work or don't want to, you know, operate in this system of commerce. So they, they prefer to kind of live on the street. Now I know, that's not always the case. It could be just that they feel that they have nowhere to go or they, they have nobody to kind of help them. I mean, you hear now of a lot of charities that are out there that try and help, like obviously one of the big ones is Shelter. Um, there are smaller ones obviously around. Um, I mean, at the moment I'm um, planning to do the Edinburgh Marathon for um, 
uh, Rock Trust, which I believe helps young people um, in, in difficult situations. So, um, you know, I'm happy to sort of raise some money for them to try and help them because obviously, hopefully it will go to the right place and, you know, these people will get the help that they need. Um, I think it's very difficult in that um, a lot of people judge homeless people as well. I mean, in America, they have a term, they, they call them bums. And I remember seeing a YouTube video about a homeless guy that, you know, he was sort of trying to explain his situation, why he ended up homeless. And he was sort of saying that, you know, it's really difficult to to have to beg and to ask people for money. And, you know, a lot of, a lot of people just, you know, swear at him or, you know, just uh, make fun of him kind of thing. And it was just really, really sad. Like, um, again, I just think we should all be a allowed to have some kind of housing. And, you know, I think in a way, by law, they kind of do have to house us, but a lot of people don't know their rights and maybe don't know how to do the paperwork involved or, you know, not enough people come forward to help. I mean, there are services like the uh, Citizens Advice Bureau. And I mean, I've I've used them in the past and I, I find them really good. I mean, they give you a lot of good information. Uh, they They sort of you know, they might not just tell you where to go, but they might actually call for you as well, make a phone call and try and help you, you know, figure out what you got to do, um, you know, and put a word in for you almost to try and help you. So, you know, there's definitely places to turn. I mean, some people will, will argue as to how much they can help you and how far they can go, because there is obviously a lot of bureaucracy as well out there. And again, that's another thing that I think needs to be overcome, you know, because... I just think in this day and age, like nobody should be without a place to go, you know, some kind of home, you know, something that they can call home. Um, another big thing, obviously, is like people with mortgages and they might have a really big mortgage and work's going really well. And then, you know, maybe the wife or the husband loses their job. You know, they go from sort of dual income to single income and, you know, all the bills and all the expenses that they have just build up on them and again it's really hard to you know kind of come back from that and you know you might be able to get through the first three months or six months but after a while it just becomes really tough and therefore you you know you, you can't make your payments and and then they sort of you know do a repossession or an eviction you know on, on the people and again it's just really really wrong I mean Again, I think that there should be a certain time that they give the people to kind of recover and help should be given to sort of get them back to where they were. Um, I think that's one of the things that, you know, I mean, they should be allowed a break basically from their mortgage, if anything, to kind of regroup and rebuild and move on. That that would definitely be the best uh, way forward in, in that scenario. Um, you know, there's been a housing crisis as well, where, you know, they were kind of giving out mortgages that were people couldn't really afford, but they, you know, thought that there was an opportunity to make money there. And, you know, people were getting houses bigger than what they could really afford. And, you know, they ended up losing them. And it's, um, you know, and also like stories in America where your house is not worth hardly anything. It's gone like down in value, maybe by half. And, it's almost like they do this thing called a strategic default where they just feel like they can't make the payments. So therefore they better just kind of call it quits and just leave basically. And it obviously it damages their credit and probably they've got six or seven years until uh, the credit is forgiven um, or they might have to declare themselves bankrupt or whatever. But yeah, it's just really sad that, you know, a basic right to be housed, um, you know, is, is denied and... Um, I remember hearing about um, Gaddafi that basically if you were born in uh, Libya, I think it is, where you could, uh, you know, if you were a citizen, you had a right to like a home and that you could, you get free energy and, you know, um, in some of the oil rich countries, like uh, you could get like a an income from the, the revenue. So you might get almost a salary just from the oil of course, it doesn't go on in places like Venezuela and stuff, but apparently that is the case. And you just think like with all the natural resources in a lot of these lands that we live in, uh, you would think that they could give something back to the people, you know, that are, that are, you know, born there or from there and, you know, maybe help some of the people that are coming in as well. 
Um, a lot of people that grow up in these countries, like from birth, they get very frustrated as well that you get a lot of kind of people from other lands that, you know, maybe asylum seekers that, you know, it's very easy for them to get a home and maybe a car and different things like that. But the people that are sort of born and worked here all their lives kind of really struggle to get, get even that. And, you know, that causes a lot of, you know, um, division um, as well within the society we're operating in. And, you know, it's a real shame because um, I think if you're, you know, out there working, contributing to the society, then, you, you know, the very least thing you should have is, is a home or a place to go. And again, I'm not saying it has to be massive and you have to have a massive garden and everything else. It just needs to be a place where you can put your head down, you know, at the end of, end of the day. And again, if you want something bigger and better, then obviously the, the option is that you have to go out and work for it or earn the salary to kind of, you know, um, to, to, to attain that. And I think that would be a lot better. I mean, I've always felt that obviously your home should be a right. Um, electric and gas should be a right. You shouldn't have to pay for it. Uh, you know, it should be free. And obviously food as well that, you know, if we're all in a position where we could grow our own. So if we had some kind of land, whether it be an allotment or our own garden um, or, or someone else's garden that they're willing to share like a plot. And, you know, we can kind of grow our own uh, potatoes and cabbages and what have you. I think that would be would be a lot better. Um, I, I just feel like it must be the most horrible feeling to find yourself homeless. And I mean, a, a close friend of mine um, back in the day, like he had some family problems and, um, you know, there was like a lot of fights within the family and a lot of the sort of brothers and sisters got kind of booted out and um, basically uh, were told to, you know, go and do their own thing. But of course, they, they didn't have, you know, the means to kind of go out and find something else. So they were, you know, had to declare themselves homeless and, you know, go to the uh, to the town hall and basically with a bag and just explaining that, you know, got nowhere to go. And, and usually what they would do is they would find a, a bed and breakfast for you um, you know, where you could stay sort of temporarily and then that would move on to possibly sharing a, a flat with somebody else in a similar situation uh, to maybe down the road attaining your own flat that you could sort of call your own. And, um, you know, I've spoke about it in the past that a lot of people believe that the council is is there to kind of, you know, help and, you know, and I'm sure in some cases they do help, but but in many others, they, they're not so helpful um, again, you know, how they sort of look after people that, you know, um, say grew up in the land that they're in. I mean, I, I know people in other countries around that have said similar things and they sort of feel that they get treated um, less uh, less well than, you know, people from other lands that, that come to live there sort of thing. Um, countries like Sweden and Ireland and, and places like that. And, you know, in my opinion, everybody should be treated equal, you know, because we are all equal after all. And um, it's important to remember that. And I think that when people forget that we're not equal is when all the, you know, the problems start and we start to divide. And, and again, I mean, I don't feel any better than somebody homeless or anybody with millions of pounds. I, I feel I'm, I'm exactly equal to them. I've got equal standing. I don't see any difference at all. And, you know, anybody that is homeless or poor, I just think that, you know, they, they need to be helped and given a place to live and supported, you know, because it is tough because obviously they're going to go through a lot of things. Um, you know, they might um, have suffered a lot, you know, in, 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 you know, they might have been lost family members, you know, anything could, could have happened. So they, they definitely need like help. And I think it's important that we provide that. And I mean, within our own communities, you know, if you see any homeless people, go over to them and, you know, start making conversation and ask them how they're doing. You know, if, if you can help them, if there's anything they need, you know, they might ask you for a favor, you know, and if you can, if you can provide that, then by all means do it. And, you know, I mean, always be willing to help out in the local community to try and support everybody within it so that we're all kind of, you know, again, 
um, looking after each other like a real community because another problem in the world today is a lot of people don't care about each other I mean they talk about countries in the world like where you know the divide between the rich and the poor is so vast that they you know they don't care at all for you know the poor people basically and you know you go to places like South America where you have like the barrios and you know people are really really poor and you know even places like China I remember hearing about um, there's families in villages in China that have like one pair of trousers for the whole family and one you know top so they would have to you know just to go into the village to collect something they you know each child would have to put on the same trousers just to make the journey and you know you think about how many items of clothing people have nowadays you know to 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 be you know down to just one pair of trousers for a whole family and one top you know or one pair of trainers even so it just shows you the the difference and people think that you know like the working class think they're not they're not doing so well or they're not you know but look at all the things they've got i mean most people now have got like two cars and you know things like that so you know and and a sort of decent house i guess so you know there's a lot of there's a massive difference between you know again all the different classes and again i don't even get really want to get into classes because i i still believe we're all equal it's just that it seems that we've been like you know divide divided and categorized and named you know you know there's a lot of name calling out there that people you know give and um i think it's quite quite wrong but i mean um one of the big things for the poor people in places like south america obviously is you know they start to turn to crime so there's, there's a lot of robbing and stealing going on and you know they they go around in gangs killing each other you know their own kind of community really um instead of all kind of staying together i mean one of the things that that really shocked me about uh when i went to venezuela was that um the poor people would um, build their own home because they couldn't get a home so they would basically build their own uh houses um on in the mountains and basically you know they would have like houses on top of houses type thing and you know i kind of like the idea of it that you know without any sort of planning permission they could do it and i mean a lot of people say oh it ruins the view of the mountains and but you think that if the government cared about the people then surely they would um you know build some houses that they could live in but instead they've left it up to them to their own devices to basically go out and build their own home and and you know anybody that lives in in um in britain or you know they they'll know that if we tried to build our own home that you know within a few days you get a bulldozer come around and you know knock it all down and you know you probably end up in prison so you know it's amazing that in that part of the world you can actually build something whether it will be there forever whether it's just temporary housing who knows but the fact that they were able to you know get the bricks and the cement and put it build something uh, that they could call home for a time was pretty impressive and again there was uh, little consequences i mean i know that in venezuela in particular there was talk of uh, the government were going to provide some houses to you know the poor people um but they were never going to give them the title the government was going to keep the title so what that basically meant was at any time that they choose they could you know kick them out or or you know maybe just sell them on the open market or or just bulldoze them so it was kind of you know it's one thing offering them houses but if they don't get the title then that's something else and a lot of people with mortgages don't realize that the the deed of the mortgage um has them down as a tenant um and basically you know it's all about title in this world that basically we um you know nobody really owns anything you just have title in the same way that you have a car um you know you're the registered keeper you're not the registered owner so you don't own the car you just you're just the keeper and it's the same with a mortgage and everything i mean it's partly to do with why you have to pay a tax because normally you pay a tax on something you don't own and um i think it's called a low a low deal title which is basically where you kind of get the the proper title in that you really own the property but unfortunately um for most people they never get that they just get like um you know tenant status basically so it's one of the reasons why a lot of people like well I've paid off my mortgage so they they can't really take my home but of course if you stop paying your tax um they can then 
yeah, take away your car, take away your home. So it kind of proves that you don't really own anything in this world that, you know, as I've sort of mentioned in the past, the only thing you own is your, is your name, your Christian name, because um, that was a given, your given name. But anything else is just like, you know, you got the receipt, but the receipt basically says that you paid by Visa or you paid by MasterCard or you paid by cash. You know, you don't really own anything. It's um, just the way it works. And it's just really, really terrible um, that, you know, they won't give people the full right to it. Because then obviously when they get that, it can't be taken from them, uh, which is part of the game that they like to, you know, um, take things um, because, you know, it kind of puts them in a stronger position than, than us kind of thing. Um, anyway, moving on, um, I hope that the homelessness situation improves and I hope that the charities that are doing the work are, you know, utilising the donations the best possible way, you know, and I hope that it's, you know, it becomes a thing of the past and I hope eventually they, they, they wake up to the idea that, you know, how can we be in this day and age and have this homeless problem? Because another thing that I, w I could never understand was um, foreign aid that the each country give. Don't get me wrong, I know that there's a lot of money that the rich hold and they, you know, don't really use. Um, so obviously it's one thing that they've got lots of money and they're not, you know, helping somebody. But in terms of how can you be in a national debt and still afford to pay foreign aid, you know, surely it, it wouldn't make sense. And I know that a lot of foreign aid um, usually leads to deals being cut. So if they help a, a certain country, for example, in Africa, um, they could then make some kind of deal to do some kind of business there. So it shows that they're helping, but they kind of want something in return for the help. It's similar to rich people when they... Um, they, they support a charity and then when it comes to time to pay tax, they get tax write-offs for, you know, um, all their charity that they do. Um, similar thing with foreign aid. I think they give a lot of it to get a kind of, you know, it's more to get a return or to save on the tax bill um, and to get some kind of follow-up business out of it. Um, so that's kind of why they do it. And a lot of people are like, well, if you can't really afford to send money outside, why do you keep doing it? And again, it's one of those um, questions that, you know, they'll never answer because, you know, they'll never fix their own place first because it's not supposed to be fixed. It's supposed to be broken and they like it broken because that's the best way for it to to run and they like it confused as well. So that's why nobody understands it or, or even wants to get into it. Um, I think it's Socrates said something like um, an unexamined life is not worth living and you know I think that's what goes on a lot they make it so confusing and so wild that nobody really wants to get to the bottom of it and I don't really blame them because to me a lot of it is just puke you know it's just I'd rather not learn about it I'd rather just worry about my, you know what I'm doing and not what really they're doing because I don't really you know really get what they're doing and I think it's a lot of uh, confusion and mess um, but it you know at times you think that they're trying to help but really they're not they're just trying to help themselves basically and that's one of the problems is you know a lot of people are selfish um, you know they'd rather selfish than give fish you know so it's kind of it's always been that way it's like they won't do anything for for the for the for the want of just doing it They'll, they'll always do it for some kind of um, reward. And I feel that that is the biggest problem out there right now. And, you know, I think that they need to, to look at why people are becoming homeless. Um, you know, what's behind it? You know, is it the bankers? You know, is it the, the interest rates that are out there? The energy companies keep putting their prices up instead of kind of keeping them at a decent level. Um, why are they even charging us for it? You know, um, surely we pay a lot of tax. Could that not pay for for these things? You know, um, it's one thing like, you know, taxing people. But if we're not really getting anything for it, you know, in return, then 
you have to ask yourself why are we paying it you know why why um i mean i understand that we're sort of operating in a world that we don't like you know you know they they they, they make all the rules and we have to kind of follow them but um it just doesn't seem to be very very fair and you know i've got my hang-ups about that obviously as you can tell <laughs> but but yeah i mean all i want is much better um treatment of the people and for everyone to have a home and to be equal and for it, them to tackle the homelessness problem and you know i think it's important to support the families and children and you know um improve their situation and you know so that they can build on it and go go wherever they want to go um i know there's been many stories of people that were homeless that were able to turn their life around and and i think that's great as well and I think that that's what we should all be doing is trying to better ourselves and, you know, and in helping others, you can better yourself as well. And again, that's not trying to do it for a reward. That's just to bring everyone up. You know, we all want to do well. And I always say, if you have friends or family that, you know, want to do something, support them 100%, because if you support them and and give them encouragement that will make them go on to do what they're going to do and they're going to become um, great at, at what they want to do and and you know a lot of people try to talk people out of things they're like oh no don't do that that's a mistake and you know there's a difference between giving you know honest advice and you know saying well okay you can do something but you need to do this first and you know try to sort of you know, go through everything with them, but at the same time say, look, I'm not telling you I don't want you to do it. I want you to do it. I just want you to do it the, the, the proper way, the right way, so that they can then, you know, go on to do great things. And that's one of the things as well that a lot of people um, are actually trying to do really great things and it doesn't quite work out. And then they end up in situations where they can't pay their bills and they end up homeless. And you know, I've heard many stories of very rich people that have been bankrupt a couple of times and, you know, because they've kind of learnt their lesson, they've been able to kind of start again, rebuild and then kind of get back to where they were or or do even better. So, you know, I definitely believe that there is um, a way forward and all it takes is just a little bit of help from everyone to kind of get people um, back up to where they they can be and where they should be um, at the top, basically. Um, but yeah, I feel that's pretty much all I've got to say on the, on the subject. I'm, I'm sure there'll be many more things that I can think of um, later, but definitely, um, it's definitely a thing I really care about deeply. And um, I hope that you all uh, enjoyed the show. Um, so I'll just give you some of the contact details for the pod. Um, my email address is superbdiamondrange at gmail.com and the website is superbdiamondrange.com um, We're available on iTunes um, as well as YouTube so please subscribe on YouTube as well. Um, thank you all for listening. Peace!